Hello everyone and welcome to our introduction to Project Plan 365. I'm Alexandra and I'm excited to show you today how this powerful project management tool can help you plan, track and manage your projects more effectively. Project Plan 365 is perfect for all the project managers who need some help to tackle the challenge of managing complex projects with multiple tasks, dependencies and team members. Whether you're new to project management or an experienced pro, this tutorial will guide you through the ins and outs of Project Plan 365 and help you unleash its full potential. So let's dive right into the world of Project Plan 365. Project Plan 365 offers multi-platform compatibility. It is available on Windows, Mac, iOS and Android, ensuring you can access your projects from any device. The app greets you with a clean and intuitive interface. This ribbon at the top contains all the essential tools and features you will need to manage your projects effectively. They are separated into explicit tabs according to their main focus. The main window is separated into two parts, a grid and a panel where our plan is going to evolve. Creating a plan in Project Plan 365 is very easy and everyone can get the hang of it, no matter whether you are a beginner or have years of experience in project management. To create a new plan, we're going to go to File, New. Now you can choose between a blank project or a template available online that may fit your needs. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will select blank project. Let's first set up our project by going to File, Options, which opens the general settings applied to our plan. From here, we can change the language, the date format, and the currency. In the Project Info tab, we can give our project a name and set its start date. Great, now we're all set. The first step in creating our plan is establishing when it's to be done. A basic to-do list. So we're going to type the gist of that into our grid. Like this, we have introduced our first test just by typing into the task name column. Great. Now let's see if we can expand on these general activities. In project planning, tasks have clearly defined detailed activities with a set duration and a given purpose for the sake of the project's success. So let's split these general phases of our project into shorter and easier to tackle tasks. To insert a new task between already created ones, you can either right click on the task and go to insert task, or from the test tab, we're going to go to the insert option and click insert. Now our plan is more detailed. It contains a longer list of activities that have to be completed. However, this list is more confusing than our initial to-do list. To structure and organize our plan better, we're going to use the indent option. To do that, we're going to select the subtask, and from the task tab, we're going to click on indent. Like this, we have clearly indicated that this precise task is part of a bigger phase within our project. Let's do this for the rest of our project. To select multiple tasks at once, we're going to use the drag option. Notice the green border that boxes the selected tasks. Identical our task had created a structure on layers. If we collapse the superior layer, the subtask will also be hidden. This gives the impression of a tree, each branch expanding into tinier ones, or of a ration doll, each layer hiding multiple layers within it. In project management lingo, this is called the work breakdown structure, or WBS for short. If you want to see more information about a particular task, we can just double click on it. This will open the task information window. From here, we can change its name, we can set its duration, we can mark the progress that has been done, and we can also set decisive start and finish dates. In the notes tab, we can add a comment pertaining to our task, which we can see indicated now by this yellow post-it icon. From the task information window, we can also set deadlines for our task in the advanced section. Side note. A good rule of thumb when planning is to create a milestone task at the end of each phase, which will mark the successful completion of that phase. First, let's add some simple tasks to our plan. To indicate that any task is a milestone, we just have to set its duration to zero days. We can do this using the duration column. Alternatively, we can go back to the task information window. In the advanced section, we have the checkbox Mark task as milestone. Let's move on to duration. We have already seen two methods of establishing a duration for a task. First, by using the duration column, where we can enter time increments such as days, weeks, months, and hours. The second is using the task information window. In general, we have duration. For now, let's take a look to our right, to this panel that we have ignored so far. This is our gun chart, and it's actually where you'll be spending most of your time planning, tracking, and overseeing the progress done on your project. Each of our tasks is represented by a blue bar, while milestones are indicated by this customizable diamond symbol. We can easily detract the duration of a task and its start and finish dates by taking a look at the timeline. For our project right here, we can also spot an issue immediately. And that is that almost all of our tasks have the same start date, which in reality 
is impossible given that some of our tasks depend on others to be completed before they can start. To indicate this sort of connection, we're going to make use of the predecessor column. Predecessors are tasks that have to be completed before their successor can begin. For example, we can develop a renovation plan without the budget already drafted. So in the predecessor column, we're going to type the number of the row of our predecessor task. In this case, too, once we have our renovation plan, we can get on with the logistics phase, as both of these tasks depend on the renovation plan. So we're going to type in 4 meaning the number of the row of the predecessor task. The third task right here depends on both 6 and 7 being complete. So we're going to type in 6, 7. Instead of doing this manually for each of our tasks, we can also just select all of them and from the test tab, use the option link. Let's take a look at our gun chart. We can notice that all of the dependencies that we have inserted are now showcased with these errors that indicate the chain of events of our project and the line of succession between the tests. We can also establish links between tests directly from the gun chart. To do that, we're going to hover over the predecessor task and then drag it down to its successor. Notice how our cursor has changed into a chain icon. And like this, we have inserted with a new dependency. Notice how the start and finish dates have changed to accommodate our dependencies, while the bars have been moved in the timeline accordingly in our gun chart. Once work has started on a specific task, you can keep track of its level of completion at any point in time by using the percent complete column. Or accessing the task information window once again in the general tab. You can also track it by using the gun chart. In the gun chart, we're going to hover at the beginning of our task until our cursor changes into a percentage symbol, and then we're going to drag it to the right as much as needed to mark out how much of this task has been completed. Now our progress is displayed by a darker shade of blue bar within our task bar. If the columns in the grid do not quite meet your project needs, you are able to customize it at any time. By right-clicking on the column, you can either hide the column or insert a new one to keep track of more aspects, for example, costs. Using Project Plan 365 comes naturally, and you can quickly develop a more complex plan out of a simple to-do list. Just take a look at what we have achieved so far. Now that we have handled the activities, their duration, succession, and progression, let's turn to those who must handle them. Managing resources is crucial for project success. In Project Plan 365, you can easily assign resources to tasks. The first method of assigning resources involves the resource name column. Clicking on this arrow is going to open a list of your team members who are already part of our resource pool. Hovering over them is going to give you a glance of their work schedule, so you can check for their time availability. You can add new resources to your resource pool by directly typing them into the resource name column. If you want to see all of your resources in one place, all you have to do is change the view to resource sheet. Notice this extensive list of icons on the left that we have a mention so far. These are shortcuts to different views, other than the default gun chart that we have addressed so far. Alternatively, you can change the view from this box in the upper left corner. Resource sheet, as the name says, displays resource information in a sheet format, in which you can view information about each resource, such as their payment rate or work calendar. We can double-click on any resource to open the resource information window, which is very similar to task information. You can continue to enter resources into this view. Resource sheet does not keep track only of your team members or externally employed workforce, but also of materials required or of costs such as fees that have to be covered to complete a project. Let's assign some payment rates to our resources. Great! Now we can return to our gun job and finish assigning resources to our task. Notice we have gotten a warning for overallocating a resource. That means that we have given this particular resource more work than they have time available to work on it. For now, we're going to ignore this message. We can assign more than one resource to any of our tasks. Now that we have assigned our resources, we can see that we also have drafted up some costs, calculated accordingly to the amount of work needed to be performed and the payment rates that we have introduced earlier. Let's take a look at other views of our by Project Plan 365 that help you organize and plan your projects more efficiently. Let's turn to resource usage. This view lists for each resource their assigned tasks and the total amount of work scheduled to be performed. This view is useful to check information on our resource task assignment, such as work allocation and work availability, see which resources are overallocated and by how much. For example, we can see that management is overallocated, as indicated by this yellow warning sign and the name being written in red. This view helps you see how many hours each resource is scheduled to work and how much time they have available for additional work. So you can determine the efficiency of your resources more easily. Team Planner has a similar use, offering managers greater visibility into and control over their team's work. 
This view displays information relating to resources and tests. Resources are listed in the resource name column on the left, and all the tests that they are assigned appear on the same row in the right panel. The tasks are represented through these grey bars, which get colored progressively into blue as the tasks get completed, making it easy to see since when and until when specific resources had been working on particular tasks. We cannot ignore this red box underlining some of our tasks, but as you can guess, represent an overall location, which is also once again indicated by having the name of the resource in red. Finally, a view that we are all familiar with. The calendar view. This view offers the possibility to review project tasks in a calendar format. Task bars spend days or weeks that the task is scheduled for. This familiar format enables you to quickly check which tasks are scheduled and on what calendar days, weeks or months. If you're not too keen on the aspect of your project or you think it is too bland, the format tab offers you multiple customization options. For example, we can change the style of the gun chart or we can use the text styles feature. In here we can change, for example, milestones to be written in red and be highlighted with blue. So they really pop out in our plan. Of course, from the test tab, you have the usual text formatting options that can be applied to our grid. Once you are satisfied with your plan, we can save it. To do that, we're going to go to File, Save As. And here we have multiple options. We can either save it locally, on your computer, or in various cloud storage. Project Plan 365 also offers its own cloud service called Drive 365 and allows you to save in other cloud services such as Google Drive, Dropbox, SharePoint, and so on. For now, I'm going to save this project locally. A core value for Project Plan 365 is collaboration, so we will let you in on a secret. Project Plan 365 is not an exclusive tool for project managers. Anyone in your team can use it. That is, you are able to share any and all project plans created in our app with the rest of your team, without them needing a different subscription. Project Plan 365 really makes collaboration seamless. To share your project plan with your team members, you're going to go to the Share tab, where you have the Share button. You can invite collaborators via email and they can access and edit the project plan in real time if they are given an editor role. To understand what an editor role is, let's take a closer look at the Manage Team feature. Here we have the email addresses of all of our team members as well as their role in our team. They are assigned even an editor role, meaning they are given the right to make changes to the plans, or a read-only role, meaning they can access the plan at any time, but they are not allowed to change anything about it. Opening the team member information window offers us even more information, such as the name given, or the work schedule in the advanced section. To further elevate your teamwork to another level, Project Plan 365 has the real-time collaboration feature. Now all of your team members can access and make changes at once in real time. This fosters better communication and teamwork. Everyone will be able to check on the progress of your project and what still needs to be done before the finish date. Finally, let's talk about reports and analytics. Project Plan 365 offers a range of reporting options to keep you informed about your project needs. You can generate visual reports on project status, milestones, upcoming tasks, SCOV reports, or burn down reports. Project Plan 365 offers you multiple options for customization in regards to reports, so you can get all the graphics you need and stay on top of your work. These reports provide valuable insights and help you and your stakeholders make data-driven decisions. And there you have it, a quick introduction to Project Plan 365. We've covered some of the basics and key features and shown you how to get started with creating and managing projects. Remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Project Plan 365 is a versatile tool with many advanced features to explore. So go ahead, give it a try, and let us know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and helpful content. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy project planning!